Hey guys, this is our seventh and final episode of this first season of Blessed Are the Geek. I hope you guys enjoyed what we did this season and what we kind of tried to do or whatever. So in this episode, I sit down with one of my friends, Johnny, and we talk about high stakes games. Stuff like Hunger Games, the Saw franchise, stuff like that. That's sort of like the type of genre of things we're talking about in this episode. Uh, so a lot of the stuff was new to me, and so I hope it's new to you and you kind of... Uh, discover some more things that you may not have realized that you liked. Um, so don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We have a Facebook group, Blessed Are the Geek. Uh, go check that out there. We do a lot of streaming almost once a week. And right now, uh, as as of recording this podcast, we're actually doing a, a monthly video game club. And this month we're playing Kirby's Adventure on the NES. So uh, we've been doing some streaming of that and other stuff. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy this last episode of our first season. And stick around because we have some really cool stuff uh, coming season two. And we're changing up the format a little bit. We're trying something new. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, this is episode 7 of Blessed Are the Geek Podcast, and we're sitting here with Johnny! Hi. Um, not as excited as I am to be here, <laughs> apparently. It's a morning. It's, yeah. <laughs> I'm normally uh, just waking up. I was, I was going to say, I can tell like you're really not a morning person, because I was like, well, can we get started at like 9? And you're like, uh, how's like 10 maybe? <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Um, I wouldn't have time to like shower at least. So. Yeah. Having a kid makes you get up, like, super early. Anyway, um, so we are here. So this podcast is a podcast uh, to talk about people's uh, hobbies, uh, interests, jobs, and fandoms. So today, what are, what are we talking about for your fandom, your hobby, your thing? Basically, like, high-stakes game sort of series in general. Okay. Um, and so just, like, so since we're going into it, why don't we explain that kind of as fully as we possibly can, that kind of, like, all-encompassing kind of thing. All right, so generally a high-stakes game is a game with high stakes. Wow. Uh, yes. Uh, so descriptive. Uh, a lot of times high-stakes games have people, like, betting their life on the line. Um, you get examples being, like, Saul, where people are, like, not well. They're not necessarily betting their life. They're kind of putting that game in sure. without their it's own like volition. A game. Yeah, yeah. But uh, dying is a real good chance in that. Um, sure, it's a really good chance. Um, but it's not necessarily just dying particularly. But it could also be like super heavy, like gambling, like talking like we're talking billions of dollars worth of money that could put you into crippling debt. Okay, so, so. Um, to so to start off things. So like examples would be Casino Royale. I have not seen Casino Royale, oh, okay. so I well, wouldn't he, know. He, he basically gambles with, like, a crap ton of money. Mm. Um, I forget exactly. Somebody out there is like, oh, it's exactly 7 point. But it's it's a lot of money, whatever it is. Like, it's an insanely amount of money. Um, Hunger Games, we were just talking about that a minute ago. Yeah. Um, Saw franchise, we were just talking about that. And then you just mentioned off my Kaiji. Yeah, Ultimate Survivor Kaiji. Um, that's that's one that's, that's more money-related than, like, life-related at times. So. Yeah. Um, and there's also, um, let's see, in the, and that's an anime. Right. Um, a lot of my experience comes from, like, more Eastern titles than Western titles. So, because the Western titles would be, like, Saul, Hunger Games. I don't know if Maze Runner ah, does funny. that. Uh, I actually just looked up, uh, I, I, so, uh, before we got started, you, you turned me on to this TV trip site, uh, about high stakes game, like the whole genre. Yeah. And, um, I clicked on film and one of the first things is James Bond and Casino Royale. Oh, okay. Well, uh, there where you the go. winner was supposed to get 150 million. Well then. Yeah. There you go. So that's, uh, apparently Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest is on here. Why? Um, why is that? The crew of the Flying Dutchman play Liar's oh. Dice with oh, the only yeah. thing they have left to wager, the years of service they owe to the ship. Yeah. Uh, that's, okay. Yeah. Um, it seems like, it kind of seems like high stakes game is a, or high stakes games is a really kind of loose, very broad yeah. kind of thing. But I get, I get what you're, I get what you're saying here. Some of the more exciting ones have people's lives on the line, so. Yeah, like another one here is Space Jam. 
oh yeah i guess that works <laughs> <laughs> so i never thought of that that's hilarious dude okay uh, i thought Yu-Gi-Oh was the one that like turned me on to this genre uh-huh. but um no apparently space jam that's that's really funny um <laughs> this this mentions uh, the film clerks not not the the content within the film but the actual making of the film because kevin smith financed the movie by uh basically pawning and selling a bunch of comic books uh, and then putting things on his credit card, so... So he just went into, like, massive debt. Yeah. And it was like, it paid off! Yeah, he was like, I hope this works! <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... That's interesting. <clears throat> so you and I just went and saw uh, Jigsaw, the newest yes. Saw film. Yes. Um, a lot of... I think that franchise gets a lot of hate. Uh, it only gets a lot of hate because of how long it's gone. Um, yeah, but and, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, so I guess, like... It gets similar hate to, like, say, Friday the 13th has gotten, because it just keeps going. Yes, but Saw hasn't been in space. I guess that's true, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> Saw, Saw does a good job of keeping itself grounded. Like, we saw J.K. Yeah, you said this 100%. is a spoiler-heavy podcast, yeah, right? Yeah, sure, So, yeah. so, we can... so if, you're, if you're listening to this and you're like, Oh, I haven't seen the new Saw movie! Um, we're about to talk about the new Saw movie, so <laughs> you may want to uh, turn it off if that's what you're into. Let's see, what's today's date? Like, the... 14th, right? 14th of November. I mean, it's been out. It's yeah, you've had over, over two weeks, so... Yeah. Um, anyway. All right, all right. So, like, J- Jigsaw did a good job. Like, it, there was a scare, like, oh, it's going to go into, like, this supernatural thing. Uh, uh, Jigsaw is still alive. John Kramer's still alive. Yeah. It's like, I know we, we had that moment in the movie. We're just like, what the crap is going right, on? Right, right. Where, like, you and I turned to each other several times in that movie. We were like, he had an autopsy. Like, what's going on in this film right yeah, now? Like, uh, I don't even understand. They I was, pulled I was, something out of his stomach. Yeah. <laughs> like, they they literally showed them, like, pulling his brain out. Right, right. And, like, folding his his face skin back over the skull. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, but the... I, I thought... Um, I thought there are definitely low points in the Saw franchise. Saw 5? Um... I can't even remember which one that is. That's the one that ended with the trash compactor and Hoffman in the the glass case. Oh, I gotta say that the that ending scene was one of my favorite Saw. Films. Okay, no, no, yeah, because like okay, Saw growing five. up, you always saw that that like the yeah. walls coming in kind of thing, but to actually see somebody trying to fight it and his like forearm breaking because he's trying to stop the thing, it's like that that really just kind of puts that whole trap into yeah. the realm of like possibility and realism and stuff. Yeah, Saw 5 <laughs> actually did two like of those childhood traps <laughs> as, as morbid uh the pendulum. It it opened oh, with yeah. uh Hoffman executing uh his sister's killer right. um with a pendulum trap though he made an unfair one because right, right. he wanted to kill him but right. pinned it on Jigsaw. I I and that's what I love about the. the I don't, we'll get to we'll get to other um, high stakes stuff in a minute, but that's what I actually really like about the Saw franchise is that overarching story. Yeah, um, I really like Hoffman as a character. Like he's really easy to hate. He's really easy to hate, but he's he's also like he's he's not just like this flat character. Like he's very he's very complex. You can kind of tell he's kind of complex. Sure, but um, like yeah, he's easy to hate because like. You you watch the Saul franchise and you're like, yeah, these games are winnable. They're totally winnable. It's just there's a low chance of winning because people are either they're really dumb or they can't stand the pain. Which I mean, that's, right. that's understandable. Hoffman comes in and he's like, he he's not your game master. He's a serial killer, and right. like there's a difference. Like they they call Jigsaw the Jigsaw killer or the John Kramer the Jigsaw killer. Sure, but he doesn't do the killing. Everybody in the traps do the killing sure and and john kramer was more about the mental rehabilitation of these people and getting people on a better life track like there's was wasn't the guy in the razor wire uh maze in the first one i think it was he was uh, a cutter was he a cutter yeah he was a cutter i knew there was there was like some they like, actually they actually have <clears throat> him in a later movie where they actually show his abduction and like he, I think he just got like fired from his job or something. And he's he was like, in his car or something. Yeah, like he that, was in his he? he was in his car and he like broke a bottle or something. Yeah. And he started like cutting himself with a glass. Um, yeah, that makes so then so and that's what I like about it is that like um, he doesn't just like abduct innocent random people. Like anybody in his game has done some pretty awful things, or they're just awful people, and he and he puts them on the track to rehabilitation. It doesn't always work. In fact, like the success rate on that is like. 
two five percent like so, yeah. like something really low like amanda survived her game but amanda's game also didn't involve like any personal harm um right which is, hers was really mental yeah oh, no, 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 no. she was no because she was in she uh, was in the she was in the jaw the reverse bear trap yeah she was in the reverse bear trap then he used her in the second movie in the big house as well, a, yes. As a spy and sort of like to lead people in the right direction. But, like, I'm pretty sure she already had an antidote for that. She she put herself in the game much like uh, John put himself, his self in the bathroom game. Right. Except she was more of an inter, interplaying part in that. Right. But Gotta keep the pieces moving in the right ways. But her survival was guaranteed so long as nobody just straight up killed her. Right. Um, but as far as her actual game, where she very well could have died... All she had to do was dig through her drug dealer's stomach. Yeah. Which is, uh... I mean, that, that'll mess up anybody. Yeah. Um. But, <clears throat> like, if you're, like... And she was told he was, quote, dead. Um, that, oh, that's right. Yeah. Is this all from the first film? Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's been so long since I saw that. Like, it's coming back to me as we're talking about it. But. Yeah, I looked up, like, a ton of Saw tribute over the years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that was her drug dealer. Um, But he was, quote, dead, and by dead... Um, they meant pumped full of opioids. Yeah, like super so, sedated. So he wasn't like feeling anything, but she totally killed him. Yeah, she yeah. totally killed him yeah. for that. But she didn't really have a choice in that matter, right? Whether or not she wanted to die. Yeah. So um, another one I see on here uh, towards the bottom that I think is really funny is uh, episode one, the Phantom Menace. <laughs> <laughs> um. I was trying to think of the the line from. It was a prepubescent flying ace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I was literally just sitting here trying to think. What was that line? Yeah, wrong? <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad mentally we both went to the exact same place. Um, but yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I mean, here's the. Uh, <laughs> it's just so funny. They they bet their ship. Their one way off the planet. Yes. Um. But to be water. fair, Qui Gon cheated. A little bit. Like, here and there, Qui-Gon cheated in more to, like, kind of secure them getting off the planet. I See, it's, it's been a while since I've seen... I mean, it's, it's been a couple of years. Like, I watched them recently. And, like, I feel like Phantom Menace gets, like, a bad rap. I think it's a really bad rap. Like, it's, it's not as bad as people make it seem. Like... Yes. I watched it last year or way earlier this year or something like that. And I was, like... Tr- I... I set myself out to be forgiving of Jar Jar, right? And I was like, okay, let's see how bad he really was in hindsight. Yes, he was racist. Yes, he wasn't that great of a character, but he didn't have as many lines as people seem to remember yeah. he actually had. A, one, a lot of what people had issue with was um, his uh, like knack for just barely dodging problems. Right. And, of course... Think, like, Drunken Fist or whatever. Right. Uh, Drunken Master. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, well, now it's come out, um, and I think it's it was... actually come out? Are you, are you, I think it's, like, are almost, you going almost super confirmed. The, the Sith Lord Yeah. Um, I, I don't... See, I, I've seen the theory, but I haven't heard any hard evidence for it. Right. As soon as I love Lucas the comes out and says, like, yeah, that's what I wanted to do... But at the same time, he, he'll lose a lot of disrespect in my eyes if he comes out and says that, because that means that he caved into pressure. He caved into people saying, what is this character? This is awful. Why are you doing this to my life and childhood and favorite franchise? But if he had stuck to his guns and nutted up, then It would have been, like, one of the best... It, it would have been amazing. Because, like, what was, what was going to be the big twist of... Uh, like, the big twist of the original Star Wars franchise was, oh, Vader's Luke's father. Right. Like that, and the cinematic history, right there. Right. Um, what would have been the big twist of the first three? Like, oh, Anakin became Vader. <laughs> right. Right. Because he caved into that. Pr- like, if if Jar Jar being a super Sith master is canon, or was the intent, you had much more possible, many more possibilities, and much more to do with those films than just like. Let's just explain everything. Because, like, nobody... I was listening to something the other, day, the other day, and they were talking about mysteries and stuff. And the worst thing you can do with a mystery is explain it. Yeah. You know? Like, that's what makes... That's what makes, like, creepypastas so good. That's what I was listening to was uh, This Is Rad Podcast, talking about creepypastas. And they said that, like, if you... Like, good creepypastas will stop at a certain point and then just leave it hanging. Like, there was one about how... um it was actually like a blog 
like these like uh, silence these like nature explorers or something doing something and they were keeping up with like a regular blog on some tumblr or whatever it was and then they said like we're gonna go into this cave and then the blog just stopped which is great they didn't come back and be like by the way there was a giant monster in here and he ate everything it just, it just happened right um, it's like I used to watch uh, Marvel Hornets on YouTube. You ever see that? That's they were talking about that in that podcast, and I that was one of the few things I wrote down to like look that up later. Yeah, um, Marvel Hornets. I I, I guess I'll, I I there's not really an ending to Marvel Hornets. Yeah, like, it's a, you just you just kind of like they're like I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Um, that you, might you, be what I'm talking about. Though. You get a well, it wasn't a blog. It was a it was a video log. Oh. Um, it's a, it, it's on YouTube. You can find it on there. Sure. But like it just it just kind of ends. It's just like I'm done. Sure. I'm done with this. Um. But it, it was all about Slender Man and all that. Oh, that's what that's what it was. Okay. But like you're talking about, and I'm gonna segue back into our actual. Topic. Yeah, I was I was trying to get back there. <laughs> um. So you're talking about like the worst thing you can do for a mystery is explain it. That's not always the case though, because sometimes an explanation for the mystery is needed. Sure. Um. In case in point, Dongan Rampa. Um, it's a visual novel type game, um, and it, it had a, f- kind of a following in Japan after the first game dropped, and then there was, like, an actual, like, anime made for it, and once the anime dropped, that kind of turned a lot of Western audiences onto it, the anime watching kind. It's usually how we get things. Yeah, stop I... stop making them, and they were like, wait, wait, I want that! <laughs> well, and they didn't stop making it, actually. Um, there was, there was a second game, like, that had, like, was just about to come out, or had just come out, or something, uh, Super Danganronpa 2 Goodbye to Spare. Um, the names over there. Oh uh, yeah, the first one was Dongan Rampa Trigger Happy Havoc. Jeez. <laughs> um, but uh, the premise, the premise there was to uh, you had these. The first Dongan Rampa has fifteen kids in a school. Like they're they just you're, you're, you're like you're you play as Makoto Nai, uh, Nayagi. There we go. Okay. Um, and you, you he's starting his first day at Hope Speak Academy um, as the ultimate lucky student. Um, every student that goes to Hope's Peak Academy has this ultimate talent. Um, throughout the first game, we meet the, uh, ultimate baseball star, oh, okay. or ultimate athlete or something. Sure. Um, the ultimate fashionista, the ultimate computer programmer. And his is luck. Yeah, his is luck. Because what Hope's Peak Academy does is they study ultimate talents. Okay. And one thing that they wanted really to study was luck. So what they do is they run a lottery. And, like, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people enter this lottery and the one person chosen out of the lottery gets to be the ultimate lucky student. This allows for us to have multiple lucky students throughout the series. I we suppose. Have, I mean, yeah, we have two. Uh, okay. This is one in the second game also. I feel like there's, there's a lot of flaws to that logic, but okay. Well, yeah, but... Um, and we never... We don't see a ton of, like, Makoto's luck happen That's what I'm saying. Throughout the series. It's like, just because you picked him doesn't mean he's insanely lucky. It just means, yeah. that, like, just by random chance, like... Yeah, but we do see some small instances of it happening, particularly in like this very pinnacle point in chapter five, that I don't really want to talk about because I really want people to play it. Sure, because it's such so, a so, it's well, such a great how, story. So how does it how does it um, how does it involve in high stakes games? Okay, so these fifteen kids are locked in. They they wake up in the school with like no memory of how they got there. Like they they remember like going to the school mm-hmm. like on the first day of class. And then there's this giant blank in their memories, and they wake up in the school. When they wake up in the school, uh, the the walls are boarded up or, uh, like, bolted shut with these big steel things, barbed wire uh, covering, and there's a giant vault door at the entrance to the school. So there's no way out. Right. Um, and all the students, like, kind of gather together at this entrance hall, and they, they meet up, and they're like, what is going on? Um... And they finally end up in the gym where they meet Monokuma, uh-huh. this this robotic bear. Uh, he's kind of white on one side, black on the other. He's just something really kind of weird. Um, Sounds like Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, tells them, uh, this is going to be your life from now on, unless you want to leave. If you want to leave, you need to kill one of your fellow students and get away with the murder. And by get away with the murder, he means you're going to kill somebody. Um, and then you're going to hold a class trial. So when, when somebody is killed, they wait until three people discover the body. Once three people have seen the body, a body discovery announcement is made. Everybody gathers to where the body is. 
then an investigation occurs. You investigate the room, you investigate all the open areas of the school just in case, you know, you got to find all your evidence, and then a class trial is held. And that's where some of the real gameplay of Danganronpa happens, is the class trial debate, sure. where you've got, um, at this point, uh, 14 people, um, because, you know, death happens, right. uh, arguing about, oh, well, um, there was this item in this room, uh, which means that it had to have been this person that attacked this person, right. not the so other way around. Into, like clue meets Ace Attorney. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like you've also got like so there's several different game modes in it too. You have like the nonstop debate where you've got like these weak points that'll show up. Um, I guess you can think of it like Ace Attorney scrolling through the text, and then you're like, oh, here's this evidence for that. It's like that, but a little more advanced in that you have these truth bullets, quote unquote. Hence the trigger, Happy Havoc. Um, so it's like, oh, the uh, gold leaf sword uh, scabbard uh, can be used uh, to shoot the... And uh, this person attacked this person and be like, oh, no, the scabbard shows that a sword, the same sword blocked the... Yeah. Or was blocked with the scabbard. So you can use that to break but, their so, argument. So is this I'm, so was this a game or was this an anime? This was a game that was adapted into an anime. Okay. Now, I would highly suggest playing the game sure. because the... Anime really skims on a lot of the character development, which makes particularly right, right. case four really weird in how it goes off. It's just like it comes out of nowhere. But if you play the game, you know like the development between these two characters and why sure. certain steps are made. Well, it kind of like I said, it, it kind of sounds a little bit like Ace Attorney. Um, which have you ever played one of those? Yes, I've played uh, all but the most recent one, the spirit oh, okay. channeling one. Um, I haven't. I've only played like one and a half so far, but <laughs> those those get, uh, and the only thing I don't like about uh, Ace Attorney is how much reading I have to do because it's all the game really is is yeah. reading. Um, yeah, well, I mean I that's the thing it, about visual novels. Yeah, like Phoenix, Phoenix Wright is <clears throat> one of two visual novels that I know of that have gone over real well in the West. The other one being Danganronpa. Danganronpa is a visual novel, though it has like actual like real gameplay elements to it. Like you have like an actual school you can explore. You have. Um, it's not just like a lot of menu navigation. Right, it's not point and click like yeah. Ace Attorney. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like Ace Attorney, but it's also not like Ace Attorney. Gotcha. Like there's also like uh character relationships you can build. Um but also the uh fun part when it gets to the actual like class trial yeah. is that um if the person who murdered the other person gets caught, they're the blackened, um, if they are caught, then they are executed. In glorious fashion. Oh. Yeah, I guess I can... A la Japan. Yeah. I guess I can, like, spoil the the, sure. for the very first case of the game. Um, of, like, who the killer is. Because it's very obvious. Like, you, you find this... Well, maybe don't tell who it is, but how they died. Okay, well... <laughs> oh. How they died... <laughs> they also well, have a very um, ironic death. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I can... Like, it's, it's meant to be a, a tutorial case. And it's really obvious, really, oh, going into you, that. Like, you. You, you have the number... Um, uh, what was it? Oh... Uh, one one zero three seven written on the wall in blood. Okay. Right. Except if you look at it, you can kind of see like, oh wait, this this one one actually there seems to be a streak that kind of like faded out in there. So oh, that's definitely an N. So you turn mm. it over and it says Leon. No, well. it, it, I guess it was a Leon. Yeah, it, Leon. Going the other way. So because really, what the person had done was they had. I guess that makes a lot more yeah, sense. Yeah, they were leaned up against the wall and like they, <laughs> so they had written like L E. <clears throat> Sure. Or L E. I guess it was seven zero three one one or something like that. Sure. Um, so Leon, and so that was of course the right. guy who killed this person. I don't want to spoil who the actual victim right, was, right? Right. Because that was a shocker. Um, but uh, so Leon's death is okay. He gets the shackle around his neck and pulled to this post in this batting cage because he's the ultimate athlete, ultimate baseball oh, star. Boy. Um, and the execution is called 1,000 Knocks, which is, um, Monokuma basically goes up to bat and bats basically like a thousand or a million or whatever baseballs into him. And he's basically beaten to death by a bunch of baseballs while everybody else stands there and watches in like a ghast horror. That sounds like a really slow and agonizing death. Too. Oh, it's, it starts slow. It's like, <laughs> it's like pop, 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 pop. But then it starts like speeding up to like machine gun speed and it's just like rotating sure. around. Oh, okay. Like the final scene of Leon is just like a thousand baseballs like closing in on him on his face and he's like screaming. It's just like whop. Just whop. <laughs> just whop. 
So, you're, left, you're left with like this very morbid scene of him just like hanging there in the shadows right. uh, on this post. So, um, are you uh, are you a Doctor Who fan? I am a Doctor Who fan. Yeah, Doctor Who fans. Um, because I haven't seen all of the most recent season though. So. I, I just um, started on it today. I just watched the Husbands of River Song, so uh, I'm, okay. I've started down that path. Oh, you got I love that comedian. Um, cause if you've ever, have you ever seen Come Fly With Me? Which, which comedian? Uh, the guy who's like the robot helper bald guy. Oh yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's like a British comedian. He's also in the, the new, uh, the new season, isn't he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's in, he's like one of the new companions. Or okay. Uh, but he's a comedian and he's in this TV show called Come Fly With Me and Pompaduo. That's on Netflix. Pompaduo is garbage. Don't watch that. <laughs> um, but Come Fly With Me is absolutely hilarious. That has nothing to do with high stakes games, but you know what does have something to do with high stakes games is Doctor Who because almost literally every episode of Doctor Who is high stakes games. The Doctor takes a gamble generally. Well, of of new Who stuff. Well, yeah. A lot of old Who stuff was like, maybe something's gonna happen. I don't know. We're gonna take seven episodes to find out. It's like three, I think, was uh, considered to be like James Bond. Essentially, he always had like John Pertwee get... was awesome. I love yeah. John. Like I haven't see I haven't seen like any of the old Doctor Who stuff. Like it's good. I started. I, so okay, some, I started... some of it is so like. A lot more of the New Who stuff is, you, you know, like, New Who is, <clears throat> like, there's really good episodes, and there's really not that great episodes, right? It's it's much more garbage in the older stuff, in my opinion, than there is really good stuff. So, there's a couple, like, the uh, for a while on Netflix, they had, like, a best of old Doctor Who stuff. Which it was, like, what, two not, episodes? <laughs> It was like one of each doctor, almost, uh, or like one or two or whatever, um, which may not be a good place to start um, look for stuff like that. Like, the first doctor was like... Well, to be fair, eight only had a movie, so... Sure. Um, like, the second doctor, one of his last things was a seven or eight part, 30 minute, th- you know, and it's like, this is just, it's going on too long. Like, I didn't need this. Um, but anyway, so Doctor Who, <clears throat> uh, lots of times... You know, it's it's like, let's save the world from aliens destroying the world or something like that. And yeah, there is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of luck. There's a lot of talking your way out of situations. Um, is TV Trip still telling you about Doctor Who over there or? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I, when, when we were talking about this, I was just, because I had just watched River Song, The Husband's River Song, before you came over. So like, it's really fresh on my mind and I'm trying to like, get caught up or whatever. And as we started talking about this, I was like, well, everything in Doctor Who is kind of like high stakes games. Um... But uh, this is also talking about uh, Supernatural and um, what was the other one that was uh, oh, Angel was on here? I, don't I haven't know seen why. Angel. Uh, so. I haven't seen that. Um, now, I mean, the the one thing that really does, like, there's, there's of course, like, this high stakes, like, gamble, like, yeah, everybody takes a gamble in their shows. What really kind of sets it apart for me, though, is, like, the game structure. Um, like, there are rules to be followed and not just, oh, we're just making a gamble out of nowhere. Right. Like, I know, like, Doctor Who does a lot of that. Now, there is an example in Doctor Who of that, and that is the weakest link in Nine's run. Yeah. Um, where the people who are the weakest link get vaporized. Yeah, it was... Uh, that was one of one of the game shows where they, were got, they got stuck on Satellite 5. Yeah, Bad Wolf. Um, yeah, but that was... Uh, I don't want to look it up, because... Anyway, um, but yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Um, I used to know like every episode's name, so I was trying to think of it. Um, but yeah, so another another one that has a lot of really structured rules is the Hunger, Game, Hunger Games, yeah. uh, which we kind of talked about a little bit. Did you read all the books? Yeah, I read all the books. I I saw the first movie, and then I was like, okay, I want to know where this goes. Okay, you, you give me your snarl <laughs> for the movie. The movies, the movies are good. Okay, the movies are okay. The movies are good. The movies and the books do different things. Yes. All right. So it's like it's like two sides of but the same you, story. I know there are some things missing. But from you the know movies. the the book and movie versions of Aragon were different too. Okay, but Aragon was a terrible adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> um, not that I read the Aragon book. I'm just but, trying to give you crap. <laughs> um, um, but that's not a, that's not a good argument. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, but it's it's like the, the I I know the Hunger Games books. Told everything from Katniss's perspective. I'm pretty right. sure, like, sure. like 95 percent of things was like Katniss's perspective. No, it was okay. Um, and so, like, the movies were able to like break away and show you like the world itself. Sure. As like the games are happening, so you got you got more kind of like now you only saw Katniss's perspective from the games. You didn't see what anybody else was doing. Uh, I don't think. No, yeah, because that's what that's one thing I liked about the books was that there was so much mystery and intrigue going on because like I mean if you're in if you're in 
a situation like that, if you're in this, like, you have to be the last person standing, and you don't, you don't know where the other people are, like, that alone, that part of the thing is enough to, you know, keep you, your heart going. As yeah, well. and, like, in the movies, like, you, <laughs> in the first two movies, like, because, you know, the uh, Mockingjay was kind of a, a different kind of yeah. uh, creature in itself, but um, the first two games that Katniss, is, Katniss was in, you only ever saw her perspective in both the books and the movies. You didn't see, like, other other things in the game. Now, you could see things happening in, in the other districts, mm-hmm. but you only ever saw her perspective in the game. Right. So, like, say when Thresh dies um, to Kato, like, you don't know in the books or the movies who died from that fight. Um, well, you just know that Thresh went on to challenge Kato, and eventually a cannon goes off, and you don't know who died. Yeah. Um, but later, um, Thresh's face appears in the projection uh, <clears throat> at the end right. of the day. So, Yeah, and um, I like the second one, um, how they... Oh, they the second one, the, I love the arena for the second one. Right, that's what I'm saying. I oh. like how they took a format, and then they changed it, and they were purposely trying to make Katniss fail. And yeah. make Katniss die because of the shenanigans she pulled at the end of the you know the first one. She well, did. yeah, she was she was uh, she was trying to she wasn't even trying to like start a revolution. No, not at all. She was just like, no, screw, it's a great story. Screw the rules. I have uh, Nightlock. <laughs> right, but it's a great story of somebody like accidentally becoming an anarchist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like whoops, started something. Well, either I can die. Or right. I can see this through, and it's just going to be a terrible experience all around either way. <laughs> um, so what about any other... Um, oh, I'm still looking through this list here, and Fire Emblem Awakening comes up. Like That's interesting. Um, I mean, really, you could stretch anything to kind of fit high stakes game to a, to a degree to a degree like you said you you like doctor who you're like oh well there's always this gamble but you, uh for me it has to be there's a, there's a game structure like so okay big examples for western audiences those are hunger games um oh Saul. you were talking about Yu-Gi-Oh yeah earlier. Yu-Gi-Oh Yu-Gi-Oh is one yeah Yu-Gi-Oh! I know like, nothing of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like absolutely I, I know cuz I had to I had to force you to put trivia questions yeah, in Yeah yeah I know <laughs> All I know is that Blue Eyes White Dragon is a thing, and I don't know what it does after that. That's yeah. all I know. Yeah. Uh, you, I, you, the one Yu Gi Oh question you had ever asked, like, before I, I like, confronted you about it, was like, uh, so what do the five pieces of Exodia do? Yeah. <laughs> it's I, like, that's Yu Gi Oh 101. Come on, man. Sorry, man. I don't, I don't know where to start. Uh, but so tell people why, because clearly I cannot be the only person that doesn't really care about Yu Gi Oh. What it, how does Yu-Gi-Oh, how is that a high-stakes game? Okay, well, there's two parts to Yu-Gi-Oh, first of all. The uh, the one most people are going to be interested, or not really interested in, I guess, but familiar with, is the um, the Duel Monsters version. I want to make sure you're still recording, too, though. I am, yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just know your thing went down, so... I just, no, no, uh, no, sorry. Okay. Um, all right, so everybody's more familiar with the dual monsters part of yu gi where it's like, oh, they're playing the card game, or they're summoning the monsters, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, Exodia, all that. But there's also the original manga. The original manga spans, like, 13 volumes. It's very different, and it's... Dual monsters does show up there, but it's nowhere near as prevalent. Um, when, uh, after the first original run, they decided to kind of flesh out things with the card game. They released a card game based off dual monsters, but then they kind of made the new Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters arc or stuff, and then they kind of pushed into a new card game when Konami took over, because Bandai used to own it. Sure. I've actually got a Dark Magician from when Bandai <laughs> owned the card game, and so like everybody I showed that to was like, what is that? It's like, it's so real. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. That's a- you know Bandai and Konami. Sure, I know, I know yeah, I know Rest in peace, them. Hideo Kojima. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but, uh, so... Back to so high stakes games right. and Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, right. High stakes games and Yu Gi Oh. Um, that's basically all Yu Gi Oh is is a bunch of high stakes games. You like you think oh it's silly card games, but like in the original Yu Gi Oh. Uh, now the first episode of Yu Gi Oh. It's just Yu Gi versus Kaiba and Kaiba just being a little butt. But sure. Um, once you start entering in Duel's Kingdom, people start like Pegasus bets people's souls. Like and it's like oh. 
He's like, and that's he, their souls. Yeah, he's like, Yugi, play with me, otherwise I'm gonna do stuff. And he's like, well, Yugi almost beats him, but uh, he's like, I'm gonna take your grandpa's soul. Right. Come see me at Duelist Kingdom. Ha ha. Uh, <laughs> Kaiba, <laughs> Kaiba eventually falls into that too after Mokuba's soul was taken. So uh, Mokuba's his brother. Okay. <laughs> I guess I gotta be a little more explicit with you. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and like during Duelist Kingdom. Um, people would bet like their strongest cards, which isn't so much of a high stakes unless until you realize that their strongest cards are kind of necessary to progress in the game. So uh, it's whatever. I gotcha. Um, there's actually one duelist, Panic. He's a player killer, quote unquote, and kind of literally because he would shoot fire at people, and then like if they lose, he would just like burn them alive. Apparently, hmm. um, I believe that's what it was supposed to be anyway. Uh, Yugi, however, got like this fire tornado around him, and he's like, "Oh, let me pull out superhero with him." Let me pull out uh, main character. Story, yeah, story yeah. Mark. Let me pull out Yami Yugi, and because you know he like he was a little kid, and he always transformed in the Millennium Puzzle. It was like he turned into the king of games whenever he played Yugi. Whenever he played the Duel Monsters game, okay. Because like he was he was this little kid, and then he grew into the big kid. And the big this kid. Is the first time hearing. Them yeah, like, yeah, it has ancient sometimes. Egyptian. <laughs> there, there's ancient Egyptian roots uh, to the card game in the show, okay. where people actually also um, the ancient Egyptian version was they would summon monsters that were like, um, like sphinxes and. Well, like part of their souls, like the dual monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh, like the blue eyes, white dragon, the dark magician, all that. They were made from the souls of people like in ancient Egypt, and then they were like made into. Uh, mass-produced cards after Pegasus was like, oh, this is these are cool things. Let's base it off of this. Interesting. So the Duel Monsters game in Yu-Gi-Oh! was based off of an ancient Egyptian game that they played where they summoned each other's souls, and then they were sent to the Shadow Realm, quote-unquote. Which, by the way, the Shadow Realm is a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! that was completely fabricated by four kids that really just fit the theme of the show really well that was supposed to be a uh, not-death. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, anybody who was sent to the Shadow Realm died. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you. in the original, they died. Um, <laughs> it, it's kind of it kind of gets funny because there's like um, in like the second big arc, uh, which was uh, Battle City, which was a tournament Kaiba himself ran. Um, Yugi and Kaiba team up against these two guys, Umbra and Loomis, and they're standing on top of this like skyscraper with this glass roof. Sure. And whenever a, either of their life points drop to zero, their quarter of glass pane would shatter and they would fall. However, in the dub, they would only fall into the shadow realm and not to the bottom of the skyscraper. And absolutely die. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, which didn't make a lot of sense when Umbra and Loomis uh, pull out parachutes and fall down as they, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is, so is, is the shadow realm anything like the... Uh... The uh, Phantom Zone in Superman. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, that's, that's a, but that makes me understand it a lot more. Yeah, that's um, what, that's what I mean. Because like people, because there were some people who died who were able to come back, and so they were just like, oh yeah, they were in the Shadow Realm. Yeah, like, totally, it's the Phantom Zone. Like the yeah, like the souls of like uh, Yugi's grandpa and Mokuba and Kaiba were sent to the Shadow Realm, but they were like really sealed in the card that right. a, a card or something, and, but um, they came back. And so another another anime um, that you consider a high stakes game. Would be one of my favorite animes, which is I've only seen like two. So, of the two, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay, um, is Death Note. Uh it depends. Like, there's the there's no game structure, but it is this kind of disagree with that. Yeah, there's the Death lots Note, of rules. That's like the whole bumper part of the show. The Death Note. The Death Note itself has rules. Yes. Right. Um, but it's not so much a game as it is a. I mean, it's. No, I get it. Yeah, I yeah. get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. it's not quite a. Well, yeah. It's sure. a game of cat and mouse. Sure. But it's not like a game. Now, I mean. Ryuk might see it as a game. Yeah, Ryuk might see it as a game. Because Ryuk um, is bored. That's the entire reason he does yeah, it. Yeah, he wants entertainment. Right. But it's it's more of like. For for him, it's like watching the Hunger Games. But um, for uh, for the people playing, it's not really a game. I mean, it's it's. Basically, Light Yagami's a serial killer. Let's let's be real. Like, right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what he is. And so this is basically more uh, along the lines of like, say, Jack the Ripper or something. Ah, yeah. uh, I got you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. fair enough. Now, I mean, it does. It, there is a fine line between like serial killer and game master in some cases. Um, so you, you kind of have to be careful when you. This, these are the, these are the kind of things that I like. Are the ones that are structured in a game. There are rules to follow, and if you break the rules, you lose. Essentially. Sure. 
Um, like in Danganronpa, one of the things was you don't break doors or you don't like assault the headmaster. Somebody kind of meets their end when they assault the headmaster. Fair enough. With thousands of spears through their body. <laughs> it's a fun time. Yeah, man. Um, uh, I was I was trying to look on this list and see it, what else is on here uh, that would be a big. Uh, I mean, I can give you more Yu-Gi-Oh examples because, like, other than like oh, door I monsters. You. Like, okay, like, Seto Kaiba is a psychopath in, like, the original manga. He sets up this thing called T5, which basically, uh, one of the bit, one of the things was a room where Yugi and his friends, uh, Taya, Joey, and Tristan, uh, dub names because I don't remember their Japanese names, I watched it dubbed. Sure. Um, they go into this room, and they get locked in the room, and like, oh, there's the exit, it's way up there. How are we gonna get there? Suddenly, giant marble blocks start falling from the ceiling. Oh. So it's like, oh, let's get through there and not get crushed and escape sure. the room. Um, oh, I just thought of another one. Okay. Um, the wizard's chest. From yeah. Harry Potter. Okay, wizard's chest in Harry Potter. That one worked out because if they got captured, they would die. Right. Like so. But the one thing about wizard's chest that kind of confused me a little bit is that like, why did they have to ride the pieces? Uh, I feel like that was entirely unnecessary. Like I feel like they could have just stood at the side of the game board and just told Ron to rode go. the horse, right? Which gave him because there wasn't a knight on the horse. They had oh, to have true, true. and, and there was so, but there were two other pieces missing. Yeah, there was a king and a queen missing, which kind of makes you wonder how Professor Quirrell got through the room too. I guess it makes me wonder. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a big plot hole. That's a plot my, hole. Yeah, yeah. But it, like. Yeah, the, the unless whole... the room resets because he had to win the game. Yeah. So unless the room resets and it resets to missing two pieces, but wouldn't you think the room would reset to missing three pieces if three of them are coming in? It. I don't know. There's a lot of plot it, holes it, there. It, it probably it probably is based upon like the king is probably always missing, and it probably <clears throat> like sets the room up every time um, X number of people enter, and it removes X number of pieces. Right. I guess that makes sense. That 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 makes the most sense to me. Just coming up with an explanation on the fly, but like even like the next room because. There, there were a few um, rooms in there, but the next room is also kind of fits under that. Is it's a puzzle? Uh, did you read the books? Yes. Okay, it's so been a very long time, but I, I have read the books. But there was a potions puzzle, right? Okay, it's and, starting to sound familiar. Yeah, there was like uh, like five or eight or some number of potions there, and they all had different bottles and different colors. And there was a riddle there that Hermione ended up solving. Sure. Um, one was, and there was like fire uh, blocking these two, both doors leading out of the room. One led back, one led forward. So they had to drink one potion to move forward towards the Philosopher's Stone and one to go back to leave. Okay. Everything else was a deadly poison. Oh, okay. I see. So yeah. they had to figure out which one was which. Yeah. So of course Hermione, like Zelda. Hermione Deus Ex Machida Granger, uh, knows exactly what to do. She really was uh, throughout the entire series. <laughs> yeah. she Hermione was, was a great character, though. I guess, but like she really kind of was that ace in the hand, you know? She was, was like, "Oh, Alohomora. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, she was like, "Oh, look, I've read like every book ever, and I know every spell, so like, yeah. nothing is hard." She was she was an easy for uh, for uh, info dump. Yeah. Um. So, do you have any other high stakes games things? Uh, I mean, I've seen a number like throughout the years. Like, uh, there was one recently that came out called Magical Girl Raising Project. Okay. Which these girls who played this smartphone game called the Magical Girl Raising Project, go figure, um, they were offered to become actual magical girls. But then uh, once they had so many magical girls, they're like, oh, we have too many magical girls. We got to thin the ranks. Oh. So it's like, okay, help people. You get. You get these candy points, and if uh, you have the least, then we're going to remove your powers as a magical girl. Come to find out, removing your powers as a magical girl means you die. Of course it does. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, a lot of lot of death and sadness happens there. Um, it, it was it was an okay series. It was like the like I don't know how many in like magical girls gone dark. So that, that kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, Return of Vindicators Two on Rick and Morty. Uh, uh, to, there was no Vindicators 2. They missed Vindicators 2. Yeah, yeah. Vindicators so, 3. Right, on, right. Man. That's right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it kind of yeah. reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah, that um, was a high stakes game Rick and Morty episode. Sure. Every every room had a bomb that was going to go off or something like that. Yeah. Um, but man, my I, I think... I how, that, how do you know? How do you know? Too many times, Rick! Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> but I, I think really the best example... Um, of high stakes game, other than like Casino Royale or like I was just thinking Smokey and the Bandit. 
is one too. I haven't sort of. seen that. I haven't either, but I know the plot. Um, and uh, but I think the best example comes down to definitely the Saw franchise. Um, you know, there's other stuff like Betting Souls and Yu-Gi-Oh. And there's um, Doctor Who, where every single time the Earth is going to explode or something. But like, I think the best one that really kind of defines, in my opinion at least, what high stakes games are. You know, something that has rules, something that you know your life or something extremely important is on the line, uh, and you have to follow those rules. What else could you possibly think of than the Saw franchise? Right. And that's and that's like a Western audience. Example and like yes, it's a really good example, and that's probably what like most people listening to this are going to be familiar with. Sure, is Saul. Sure. So like Saul is definitely the best example for this audience. Um, in Japan, your best example could be either Donkey Rampa or Yu Gi Oh or oh, what's another one? I know there's another one and I can't think of it right we were now. Just talking about Hunter X Hunter before you came in too. Uh, yeah, somebody has something in Hunter X Hunter, like some game they play that they always the want to die thing with. Kind of like games. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen Hunter X Hunter, so I I've I've seen a handful of episodes. It's kind of like Hunger Games meets a lot of walking. Um, Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Ball Z actually had a a moment in that with the Cell Games. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a really good example too. I mean, it was just a fighting tournament, but you know, if they couldn't beat Cell, then the whole world was destroyed. So yeah, like, it, it was very it's very simple, but it's also like about as loose as you can get with high stakes games. Like if if they fell out of the ring, like there was a there was a moment where they could just ring out Cell and they would win and save the Earth. Um, it wasn't until Cell started fighting Goku and Gohan that it was like, no, let's get rid of the ring idea. That right. was dumb. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Who needs this? Cell's just like, look, if you can kill me, let's go. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, well, I think uh, I think we're gonna pack it up a little bit. Um, so, where do you do things like on Twitter or online where people can like I mean, find you or follow you and not really dump <laughs> to you in a pig mask? And I don't. No. Okay. I like I mean, I have. That's I have fine. A, I have a YouTube, but it was like it's got like five videos of me playing Undertale on it. So. Okay. Well, if people want to find that and watch you play Undertale, uh, Vernon Onyx. Vernon Onyx. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't like really pushing you into that or anything. Uh, v e r n a n o n i x. It is a misspelling of the two bosses of Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. Zelda games for the yeah. Game Boy Color. Varen and Onyx. Yeah. Um, which. Um, I need to play through those probably next year at some point. They're probably going to have a remake, let's be real. Oh, just geez. just imagine. They, they'll, they'll, they'll make a... I don't know, Seasons of Ages and Ages weren't too bad, but... Uh, I guess. Um, I, I guess. I kind of so restricting. But anyway, um, so this is the, this has been our seventh episode of Blessed of the Geek. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter, uh, at Blessed Geekcast, and we're also on YouTube, at Blessed of the Geek, where we do lots of game streaming and fun stuff. I think I'm starting a Facebook group here pretty soon, so... Um, all these are going to be releasing at one time later, so look to Facebook, because we, if we have a Facebook group, that's probably more likely where I'm going to be doing the most of my things, um, including game streaming. Um, so. And charity live streaming. Right, charity live streaming. Yeah, we did that. We did our extra life. You helped me out with that and did some live streaming. I think I pulled in $25. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, this $25 at hospital did not have yeah. before we started live streaming. So. Yeah, fun fact, it also could have been episode three of Blessed or the Geek. Yeah, it could have been. Except we've been delayed like a month doing this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been every... Well, honestly, I haven't... It's been so... This has taken me all year to record this this uh, podcast thing just because every single time I go to record with somebody, like, you are the prime example. Like, we have scheduled to record this podcast three or four times. <clears throat> because, like, every single time it's been like, oh, oops, uh, suddenly uh, I'm sick and I, I just can't do this. Or, I overslept one time. <laughs> right, he overslept. Or uh, last week it was, well, I didn't realize that Link was going to be uh, not at school today and he was going to be here at home, so I don't want to do that. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad we finally got to sit down and, and talk about high-stakes games. Um, I've learned about some stuff, like I learned more about Yu-Gi-Oh! I, <laughs> I know my eyes definitely glossed over there for a few minutes. Um, but, my bad. Uh, like no, no, you. it's that's that's one of those things. Just such a huge, uh, it's such a big franchise, and there's so much to it, and it's so confusing. It's kind of like X Men, but like nothing, not nearly as bad as X Men. Yeah. I mean, like I haven't seen like a lot of the most recent stuff in Yu Gi Oh. I watch. Still stuff. 
Oh yeah. Uh, oh, wow. what? Uh, Dual Links, I think, is the new one. Oh, okay. Uh, like, well, we had we had Yu Gi Oh, and then we had Yu Gi Oh GX, which was like school based. Um, then oh. we had Yu Gi Oh Five Ds, which was in the future with what motorcycles. Like, why does everything have to be in a school in Japan? Like, don't they know like that's where I don't want to be? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> it's it's a specialized school for dual monsters. Oh, so okay. it's like Soul Leader was a specialized school for people hunting souls. Uh, Jeez. Anyway, before uh, I think we're going to sit here and talk about some more Yu-Gi-Oh! as we log off here. But um, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.